The Mac Studio features Apple's most powerful chip, the M1 Ultra, which according to Apple's own graphs, outperforms not just Intel's flagship i9 12900K processor, but also Nvidia's RTX 3090. But is this really true, or is it all just marketing lies? To find out, I built a top-of-the-line PC just for this video alone. And I have 15 different categories to cover and test, with everything from the design and portability, to the CPU and GPU performance, temperatures, noise, storage speeds, photo editing, video editing, 3D rendering, gaming, and so much more. Now, in terms of the specs, I tried matching this PC uh, with the closest components that Apple uses inside the Mac Studio. So here's a full list of everything that I've used and how it stacks up against the Mac Studio. The majority of these components have been provided by Asus, so massive thanks to Asus. Uh, if you want to check out their PC build guide, they have an amazing one on their website that allows you to customize your build and pick the best components. In terms of cost, this Mac Studio costs costs $5,000, whereas all the PC components added up cost almost $5,700. So uh, this PC is actually more expensive. However, with a PC, you can pick whatever components you want, whereas with Apple, you're much more limited in terms of the configuration options. Something to keep in mind is that the RTX 3090 inside of our PC retails for $2,650, which alone is actually more than the cost of the base Mac Studio. So the win here, and I cannot believe that I'm actually saying this, it goes to Apple as number one, if you were to remove the RTX 3090 and just rely on the integrated graphics, you would still be paying more than compared to the baseline Mac Studio. And you would also get significantly worse GPU performance. And number two, I was actually struggling to even find the majority of these PC components, as uh, most of them are out of stock and the prices are very inflated for things such as the CPU, the RAM, and especially the GPU. When it comes to the portability, the Mac Studio can literally fit inside this PC case about 12 times. Not only that, but I can just put the Mac Studio in my backpack and carry it with me. This Asus ROG Helios PC case is so massive that it even comes with these carrying handles. And even then, it is so heavy that I can barely lift it. Yes, I do need to lift more. So if you care about portability and carrying your desktop with you, maybe taking it on the road for a few shoots, uh, the Mac Studio is the way to go. But when it comes to the overall design, I do actually prefer the PC. This case specifically looks very sleek with the RGB holographic front glass, and of course that if you want, you can add some RGB strips inside and really make it stand out. On top of this, you can of course choose a different case that is also smaller than this one. So for the design, I would have to go with the PC for this one, just because it looks cooler and you have way more customizability options. Now, when it comes to expandability, the Mac Studio does have a good number of ports, with six Thunderbolt 4 ports, two on the front and four on the back, you have one 10 gigabit Ethernet port, two USB A's, one HDMI 2.0, one SD card, and one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But the PC just destroys the Mac Studio in this regard. Thanks to our Asus Pro Art motherboard, we get two Display Ports, one HDMI that is also 2.1 supporting 8K60 output. We also get two Ethernet ports, a 10 gig and a 2.5 gig, six USB A ports, alongside two Thunderbolt 4 ports. On top of this, you also have four more USB A ports on top of the case and one USB C. So the only thing that this PC is lacking is the SD card reader and four more Thunderbolt ports. But if you buy a Thunderbolt expansion card, you can actually add two more Thunderbolt ports for a total of four, which is two less than uh, the Mac Studio. Now, in terms of external monitor support, the Mac Studio supports four 6K displays and one 4K display, which is more than what most people would ever need. However, with a PC, you can not only connect two 4K monitors and one 8K to the motherboard alone, but you can also connect even more monitors to the ports on the dedicated GPU. Uh, you can even have multiple GPUs in this, which means that you can connect way more monitors to the PC than compared to the Mac Studio. I mean, you can even have a crazy 8K gaming ring if you want, as uh, this does have the horsepower to drive all that. So in terms of expandability, the PC wins here, but the Mac Studio is still very impressive for what it is. Now let's talk about the actual performance. 
CPU-wise, the 12900K chip inside a PC has a noticeably higher single-core performance. However, the M1 Ultra wins in terms of multi-core as it does have 20 CPU cores as opposed to 16. But interesting enough in Cinebench, which maxes out the CPU over a period of 10 minutes to render the scene, uh, the 12900K actually scores 17% higher compared to the M1 Ultra. So because the 12900K won the single-core test and one of our two multi-core tests, uh, it does take the win here. In terms of the temperatures at the 5 minute mark throughout the Cinebench render, uh, the M1 Ultra was at 65 degrees, while the 12900K was at 79. I was actually surprised to see the Mac Studio being cooler than the PC, but I guess it is simply because it was drawing much more power, up to 240 watts compared to just 57 watts on the Mac Studio, which takes the win for the temperature. However, when it comes to the noise levels, there is a night and day difference between the two. And this is how loud the PC is. And this is how quiet the Mac Studio is. This might not matter that much for most people, but in our case, we would not be able to record a video with the PC being in the same room as us. When it comes to the GPU performance, Apple stated in their graphs that the 64-core M1 Ultra defeats the 3090. However, our results showed something completely different. In the GFX Bench 1440p off-screen test, the 3090 scored 522 frames per second using DirectX 11 compared to 473.5 that the M1 Ultra scored. And that is 10% better on the PC. Using OpenCL or Vulkan on the PC did give us lower results than the M1 Ultra. DirectX 12 gave us better results uh, than the M1 Ultra, but still lower than DirectX 11. However, in the Geekbench Compute test, the PC scored more than double, which was very surprising considering the difference in the GFX Bench results being quite minor. And this is because since Geekbench Compute is a burst test, it was causing the M1 Ultra to limit its power draw. Uh, this is why we got such a lower score. Just wait until we get to the gaming test, as this is where things get very interesting. But for now, the PC takes this one. I also wanted to test the storage speeds as we do have a Samsung 980 Pro drive inside a PC which claims speeds of up to 7 gigabytes per second. However, the highest that I got was close to 5.8, faster than the 5.5 on the Mac Studio but not by that much. However, the write speed was indeed much higher by one extra gigabyte per second, so the PC does take this one. So now let's move on to some real-world tests, starting off with Lightroom, uh, where we imported 228 images of various different sizes and formats, um, up to 100 megapixels in size, by the way. This took 32 seconds to import on a PC, however, it only took 7 seconds on the Mac Studio, uh, that is 4.5 times faster on the Mac Studio. We then applied the same presets to all the images, and this took 1 minute and 20 seconds on a PC, and just 49 seconds on the Mac Studio. So 1.63 times faster on the Mac Studio. Now, exporting all of these images took 2 minutes and 58 seconds on the PC, compared to 2 minutes and 28 seconds on the Mac Studio. So 1.2 times faster here on the Mac Studio. It looks like Lightroom does indeed like those extra cores on the M1 Ultra chip, reason why we got a higher performance. Photoshop was a very interesting one, as I ran the uh, Puget benchmark, uh, which actually does a bunch of real-world tests, such as opening a RAW file, applying masks, uh, replacing the background, adding some blur, and uh, stuff like that. And here, the M1 Ultra actually finished the test faster in 15 minutes and 43 seconds compared to 16 minutes and 6 seconds on the PC. But weirdly enough, the PC actually scored higher by close to 20%. And that's because in the test where uh, it was opening uh, a large file, it was actually faster on the uh, Mac Studio, whereas in the test where it was actually applying a GPU or CPU intensive uh, filter, for example, it was faster on the PC, reason for that higher score. Now, I have to mention that in order to run the Puget Benchmark on the Mac Studio, I had to run Photoshop through Rosetta, which does limit its performance, which means that if we had the ability to run Puget Bench natively, it is likely that we would have scored higher uh, on the Mac Studio than on the PC. So I'm going to give a point to both here, as the Mac Studio finished first, but the PC scored higher. I then tried some video editing in DaVinci with this 5 minute 4K project, which took 3 minutes and 7 seconds to export on the PC, and 3 minutes and 21 seconds to export on the M1 Ultra. I've also tried an 8K project, which took 22 minutes and 5 seconds to export on the PC, compared to 33 minutes and 18 seconds on the Mac Studio. So 
considerably slower on the Mac Studio this time. And just for the sake of it, I've also exported the exact same 8K project in Final Cut as I thought that it might be faster there, but it was actually slower, taking 39 minutes and 55 seconds. So right now, it seems like our custom PC with the 12900K and RTX 3090 does indeed outperform the M1 Ultra Mac Studio in terms of video editing. That might change once Final Cut gets updated, but for now, the PC is faster. Then I tested Blender by using the classroom scene uh, with the Cycle CPU renderer, and here, even though the Mac Studio has four more cores, this did not matter, as the PC only took three minutes and 32 seconds compared to four minutes and 37 on the Mac Studio. So that is 1.3 times faster on the PC. However, they both support GPU rendering and Blender now. So using GPU rendering, uh, the Mac Studio rendered in 1 minute and 37 seconds, so significantly faster than before. But the PC rendered in just 15 seconds using optics. Um, that is 6.45 times faster than the Mac Studio. So obviously, if you're using Blender, it's a no-brainer to use the PC as you get significantly faster rendering performance. So what about gaming? Well, in uh, World of Warcraft, which uh, I know is not the most intensive game by any means, although it is one of the few games that actually runs natively on uh, Apple Silicon, on the highest possible graphical quality, uh, which is 10, and at 4K resolution, the Mac Studio got between 125 to 155 frames per second, which is very impressive. However, the PC got between 200 to 250, that is 1.5 times higher. However, when we start running some non-native games, uh, that is when we get significantly worse performance. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with the highest possible settings and 4K resolution, the Mac Studio got 58 frames per second using the built-in game benchmark, which is very good, uh, but a PC got 131, so 2.25 times higher. And in Planet Coaster, on ultra settings and 4K resolution, the Mac Studio got 55 frames per second, while the PC got 100. And 10, so twice as much. Not only that, but on the PC, I can run basically any game that I want, whereas on the Mac Studio, I am very limited uh, to just a handful of games that work on macOS, and barely any of those actually run natively. It is looking promising for native games like World of Warcraft, so I am looking forward to seeing more native support like this. But even then, the PC was still 1.5 times faster. So having said all of this, which one should you go for? Well, the main reason to go for the Mac Studio is because of how small this entire computer is. You get incredible performance and a very cool and quiet machine that you can carry with you. On top of this, you might find it difficult to find the exact PC components that you want, as a lot of components are out of stock and sold on eBay for ridiculous prices. And in this case, you might be better off just buying the Mac Studio. Also, if you are a developer, the Mac Studio is going to be the better choice as you can run all three major operating systems, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. The PC can only run Windows and Linux. The PC is much bigger, much louder, but also more powerful in all of our tests, except for the Lightroom test, where the M1 Ultra Mac Studio did indeed win. Once more apps get updated, we might see better performance on the Mac Studio than compared to the PC. But for now, if you care about raw performance, the PC is the better choice, plus you can also game on it uh, if that is something that you want to do. However, if you're looking for the best of both worlds, I think that the baseline Mac Studio is actually a great choice, as for $2,000, which is less than most high-end dedicated GPUs alone, you still get great performance. Now, that is similar to an RTX 2070 in terms of its GPU, a card that currently costs $700. But yeah, let me know in the comments uh, which one would you go for and why. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Definitely check out our speed test series where we actually built a tool, it only works on Mac OS at the moment, uh, but we were able to run speed tests side by side against different Macs, so definitely check that series out. I'm Daniel, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Son of Tech, signing out. Cheers.